All right, Josh. Dedicated. Obsessed. Focused. This is the Masters of Fitness podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome back, people. And uh, thank you for joining us again on the Masters of Fitness podcast. Uh, we apologize for our hiatus we had over the past three weeks. It's been a very busy time. So, Thad, how's it going, Thad? How you been doing, man? I've been doing good. I haven't even been seeing my good friend Thad in CrossFit for a while, man. We've been all kind of bowled up, doing all kind of stuff. Explain to the people what you've been up to, Thad. Well, <clears throat> I've just been doing what I do normally. I had not been up to anything special. Just keep on uh, coaching my classes and cooking my food on Sundays, trying to be prepared, you know. So, if y'all don't know, Thad is uh, one of our CrossFit coaches at Golden Triangle CrossFit. He coaches the 430 class normally. And tell us a little bit about that endurance class again. My endurance class is uh, every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. And we usually um, – we have a pretty good one. It's usually about a, about a 30 or 45-minute workout that's um, not too – Technical, it's based on a lot of uh, uh, cardio type things, you know, rowing, riding the assault bike, doing a lot of body weight exercises, running. Yeah, I know initially when I joined the class, I was just trying to get faster. But it, what it did, it helped me raise my baseline uh, endurance. Right. So Right, that's why a lot of people like coming yeah. to it. So it's a very good class for all you people who lift weights and just want to increase your cardio or get better at CrossFit and raise your cardio floor. Come check that out. It is uh endurance class. The weather's getting nice outside, so we have a pretty robust schedule with that setting up. So, hey Ernest, go ahead. Before we get too deep in this show, we can't we can't get all the way into this thing without mentioning what happened today. What happened today? Oh, Tiger Woods oh, won the match. Yes, yes. Let me take my hat off to Tiger Woods real take quick. Take your hat Hold off. I just, Tiger Woods. I just tip my hat to Tiger. Tiger Woods after ten years of not. Winning a Masters, won a Masters today. Yeah, it was awesome. It was a uh, it was a glorious event, a glorious occasion. Congratulations to uh, right to Tiger Woods, and also I would be remiss if I didn't speak if you didn't guys didn't notice my nice <laughs> Game of Thrones hat I have on here. Winter is coming tonight at eight o'clock, so that's why I'm recording a little earlier, which I think we're gonna stick with to the remainder of the uh, remainder of the schedule for Game of Thrones. So. But today, today, guys, we're going to be talking to you about mental toughness, mental toughness and how to keep that mental edge and stay on top of your game and not just in fitness, but in your daily activities and just what you got going on in life. So without further ado, I'd like to bring on our guest, uh, Mr. Tyler Troutman. I would try to uh, give all your, your uh, give the very robust background that you have, but I think I'll let him uh Give his background itself. So, everybody, just give a big round of applause for our guest, Tyler Troutman. Welcome to the show. Uh, thanks, guys. I'm glad to be here. So, your uh, your hat is uh, House of Stark, right? House of Stark. Yeah. Very good. Very good, my man. House Dire of Stark. Wolf. So, Dire Wolves. Dire Wolves. I like to consider myself a Stark. They're probably the best. I would say the the most noble of the houses on Game of Thrones. So Unlike I'm, the Lannisters. I'm going to tell you my unpopular prediction. Oh, come on. I, come I think, with it. Come I think with Daenerys it. Targaryen is going to become the Night Queen. The Night Queen? She's already she's already got one dragon on that side. I think that's how it's going to end. She thinks she's going to jump the... I, I, my prediction, I think it's going to be Jon Snow. Oh, uh, okay. I think Jon Snow is going to sacrifice himself. Mm. And, but he's, he's going to sacrifice himself after he finds out that Daenerys Targaryen is pregnant with his son. Ah, could be. So... Thad, well, you look you're looking at us like you don't know what the hell's going I'm on. I'm one of the one of the ten people in the whole world that probably do, does not watch this show. I have no <laughs> well, idea what y'all are talking about. <laughs> well, Thad, I like to say you're missing out. You're missing out on a whole bunch, Thad. You're missing out, man. Yeah. Come join the fun and talk about the show with us. So, Tyler, welcome, welcome once again. So, tell the people about yourself, some of the things you're involved with it in community. So, expound upon yourself and how you you know what you got going on and how you do things. Yeah, so I've been in Southeast Texas for about 14 years now and have you know been involved in business and networking and and fitness you know pretty much my whole life. Uh, my bachelor of science degree is actually in nutrition, okay. but I, I don't use that for my career. You know, I'm in in business to business sales in technology, office equipment, and so. You know, in Southeast Texas, it's a perfect size where 
if I were in Houston and I did what I do, uh, not everybody's going to know me. But yeah. Southeast Texas is just small enough that, you know, like, like Thad's a popular guy. A lot of people know him. That is, that is and the man. Yeah, you, you have to be known before you're needed. So if someone needs to learn tips about or running or getting stronger, you know, they're, they're going to recognize you guys. I wanted to be known as the guy for every business that needed, you know, copiers, printers, office technology. Okay, cool, and cool. so I go to a lot of networking events. So that way I can, you know, uh, be fresh on people's mind and make, build those relationships with people on a day-to-day basis. But as a hobby, I still like to dive into nutrition because, you know, I spent four years going to college. That's what that. you went to school. That's what yeah. you spent all your money on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I've done some experiments on my own where I've, I've done a ketogenic diet for a time period and get lab results before and after. I've done the carnivore diet, which is all really meat, just meat and eggs only for a month and, and did lab results just, just to prove to people that my heart's not going to explode if I eat protein and fat. And so one of the things, kind of going back to our first show, I always tell people you don't really know what's going on in your body health-wise or what you try unless you can back it up with blood work. For sure. And it's one of my favorite things to do is is throughout the years. I think I started when I was about 28. I'm 37 now. And it's real interesting to see, like I, I've got, I brought some with me, you know, here at 28 years old, testosterone was 821. And then Later on, you know, as you get older, typically your testosterone is supposed to decline. Well, my, mine's been getting higher and leveling off, uh, mm. staying above 800. That's pretty so, good. So even even as I get older, you know, there's uh, age 35 here, uh, testosterone 863. Wow, that's and, pretty good. And there's there's never any exogenous testosterone or, I mean, I haven't bought supplements in forever. I'm just doing really? food. Food. Yeah. And you know, I know I actually switched from that too. I used to be a big proponent of, you know, taking supplements, drinking whey protein, but then the more and more I read, they would get a, our body absorbs these nutrients a lot better from the food that we eat right. instead of trying to supplement them with, I would say extra pills, anything like that. Yeah. So, and you know, I did, I did protein powder before I meal prep, but now <laughs> that I have those containers of food, I just, I'm just eating a, a meal instead. Well, uh, let me ask you something about that blood work. Mm-hmm. Um, are you are you aware? Of, do you take the, that blood work at about the same time? That, you know, in the morning or in yeah, the evening? Yeah, it's, it's always in the morning and it's always fasted. Okay, just so that way I can compare. Uh, you know, it, it it would definitely vary if you were taking it after a meal or at yeah. the end of the day. So, so all all of these tests are first thing in the morning, fasted. I always schedule it. You know. Uh, yeah, like at 8 a.m. as soon as I can get in there because, you know, we, we like to eat. We don't want to <laughs> go too far without eating. And right. it was mainly to show, like, triglycerides being 62 uh, a- after eating nothing but meat, you know, yeah. and, and showing. And now, uh, one thing I did notice after the carnivore diet was total cholesterol was a little bit high. But my doctor, he's a younger doctor, and he's more in tune with today's nutrition, mm-hmm. not nutrition from 30 years ago. And he wasn't concerned one bit. He said that that's to be expected, that yeah. total cholesterol is going to be a little bit higher. But cholesterol is also the precursor to testosterone. Hmm. Explain. So you, so you don't want to have no cholesterol. Yes. And so I actually tried to find some vegans that were similar age mm-hmm. and fitness level to compare lab results. And it was very hard. Uh, so I, I snuck into a Facebook group. Of, of, Snuck of, into a face yeah, uh, for for the, vegans in Houston. To so those to, vegans are they very secretive with what they do? Or? Yeah, well, well, they're you know they're they're uh, they're militant. Some of them. Ah, <laughs> yes, yes, they are. Yes, they are. And so I, I tried to cast a bigger net and go to this Houston vegan group, and I told them right away. I was, I was like, "Look, I'm not a vegan, but this is what I'm looking for. I'm trying to get someone to compare lab results. I'm like the opposite of a vegan." And the first responses that I was getting is, is how much are you paying? And I was like, well, look, this isn't a clinical trial. I'm just doing this out of curiosity. You know, if you want me to pay your copay, I'll help you out or whatever. <laughs> but, but, uh, and finally I had one guy do it and, and he, and it wasn't even what I was looking for. Cause it ended up just being like a CBC, like white blood cell, red blood cells. I needed like the cholesterol, the trigus, yeah, the, the, the deep dot. Yeah. And so I was like, what, <laughs> whatever. And that's another good thing when you go to the doctor, get your lab results, tell them specifically what you want to test. Right. You don't want to just run a basic panel, but find out what, you know, what you need, what you got, let them know. Like, cause most guys don't even tend to hurt, uh, ask their doctors about their testosterone levels. Sure. Um, and I think at my age, you have to try to, I, I usually have to pay extra for it because it's not covered under insurance yeah. until you're uh, older. And when I first went to my doctor, he, he's like, why do you want all these, re- these lab results? You know, you're, you're in peak shape. 
I was like, well, this is what I'm doing. I'm doing an yeah. experiment and I'm only going to eat meat for a month and, he, and I want to see how it's going to affect my body. And he looked at me and he said, I, I bet it's going to affect it zero, you know, because he, he was in tune. He knew that it, with an active lifestyle, it's going to be fine. Uh, now I did get leaner, uh, significantly, really? yeah, okay. significantly leaner. So that's what I've I actually started the whole, uh, my wife kind of jokes at me about it, but started vegan, full vegan two days a week. Mm-hmm. I already seen, like you say, seen the results getting a lot big leaner because of it. So. Right. And, and another thing that's popular lately is the intermittent fasting, you know, trying to <laughs> eat within like a 12 hour period. Yeah, I do uh, this. I do the 16, eight, yeah. 16, eight intermittent fasting. So, right. and, or one day on one day off. And, yes. and it, it really, it just comes down to calorie deficit. Uh, some people have results with intermittent fasting because they're putting themselves in a calorie deficit at some point in time. Oh, okay. And but the reality is, if that's what it takes to be in calorie deficit, then then you should do then it. do it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It helps you because you're giving yourself a parameter that you have to a, or a window of time. If I just say, "Hey, I'm gonna count my calories. I can eat whenever," I'm probably gonna mess up because I'm not weighing food or exactly. Or yeah, that's what. But if I intermittent fast, then it could potentially. But when it all boils down, the the main story that I like to tell everyone is is calories in, calories out is is really everything. There's yeah, and that's and like you kind of say before, I intermittent fast, and I go from eight to twelve, mm-hmm. and like before I eat my first meal, I'm probably about two thousand to twenty five hundred calories in the hole already. Mm-hmm. But the only thing about intermittent fasting is when it's time to eat, you better have healthy food available. Yeah. Is you going, you're going to consume whatever was ever in your path. Yeah, that's true. You know, especially as athletes, we get hungry yes. after working out. And so you have to be prepared, have something that you, you made, you know, hopefully on Sunday where you're cooking your food for the week. <laughs> and, and I, I'm kind of like you, Thad, where if I had to eat the same thing, I'm not really bothered. Yeah, I don't, I don't, it doesn't bother me in the least. Yeah. I'm really just eating for fuel at that point versus uh, what it is. And, you know, when I have those occasions where I eat whatever, you know, I, I like to, you know, and I went to a crawfish boil this weekend. Yes, but, I did one yesterday. <laughs> yeah, but but throughout the week, it's pretty easy for me to be yeah. disciplined. I can. And one thing yeah. that you said is that I think it's key, backtracking a little bit, is that no matter what, you got to remain in a calorie deficit if you plan on losing weight. That's no, it. You know, no matter if you intermittent fast, or no matter if you do the five days a week carnivore diet, vegan diet, you still got to make sure you consume the proper amount of calories for what you're going to burn. Sure. So back to the carnivore diet, real quick. Mm-hmm. You said you leaned out. I did. What do you attribute leaning out to? The lack of carbs? I think so because you tend to be more full if you're eating, you know, slices of steak right. versus potato chips or pasta. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of like with your kids. Uh, if, if you have a meal and, you're, and your kid's like, oh, I'm full, uh, you know, and then you say, well, we're having dessert. Oh, well, I have a separate area that I can, I can <laughs> for dessert. dessert. Uh, but if, if you put a, another couple ounces of steak in front of you you're gonna be like ah that's okay right uh it seems like you always have room for some sugar you know uh oh, yeah. ben bergeron just had a podcast speaking about that it's like your mind gets tricked because it's a new taste mm-hmm. so now you got you get full from eating your steak potatoes and all that now you have a new taste of sweetness so it kind of tricks your mind right. into believing that you have more to eat i think he said that's what actually uh competitive eaters do Oh, they okay. trick their minds yeah. into being able to eat more. I mean, yeah, nobody's eating 500 hot dogs, mm-hmm. but that's the concept behind it because you always have room for dessert right. no matter what. You always be like, yeah, I could squeeze some ice cream into there. Oh, yeah, I'll find a way. And <laughs> be- because what I was eating was so calorie dense because it had a lot of fat, mm-hmm. that was also keeping me from eating quite so often. So I leaned out because I was in calorie deficit at some point mm-hmm. in time, and I was also eating so much meat, I increased my cardio in, a, in which usually I'm not doing a lot of cardio, but I, I did separate sessions of cardio running for heart health. Cause I, okay. I you know, I had 30 days. I didn't know what the lab results were going to be. <laughs> right. I didn't want to eat, end up like the guy on supersize me. Yeah. yeah well, you I just got a heart, thing, thing, heart the disease. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was, it was a legitimate experiment on myself. And so I did increase the cardio a little bit, but since, you know, fat has nine calories per gram, whereas protein and carbs have four calories per gram and the fat content's pretty high. I was, Cause I was doing a lot of red meat. So it made me full for a longer period mm. of time. And I think as a as a result, that put me in the calorie deficit at some point of the day. Okay, cool, cool. Carnivore would be, be kind of tough for me, I think. Um, I don't eat red meat. I mean, I'll eat some bacon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But other than that, I don't – everything I eat is chicken, turkey, fish. Right. And that, that could be too. You could do carnivore with fish. Chicken and turkey. I just did red meat because I love red meat. <laughs> all right. I need is all I need is a bunch of barbecue, and I could just do straight meat. <laughs> yeah, I don't need yeah. no sides. Just yeah, give me barbecue. I did, I did salt and pepper because you can't really do a lot of sauces. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. Huh. Yeah. 
See, people don't. That's and another thing that trippy was up. Sauces counts as carbs and calories. Right. Yeah. And there, there's oh, yeah. a there's a sugar free barbecue sauce that's pretty popular right now. Really? Yeah. That uh, I I use that from day to day because ever since doing that, I'm, I'm pretty much on you know just eating whatever. I right think now. I read uh, a package of ketchup has about 35 calories. Oh, right. Yeah. So just imagine how many packets of ketchup you use on chicken nuggets and French fries, mm-hmm. or if you have a squirt bottle. A squirt bottle. Yeah. Yes. That's not. Let's not even talk about squirt bottle. Well, my it, problem with say sauce like barbecue sauce. Go to the store. Go to H E B for instance and. Find a barbecue sauce that doesn't have high fructose corn syrup. Yeah, it's oh, a lot of sugar. It tastes good because it's sugar. Sugar, yes. Right. And that, that was another There's fascination. There's only one that I know of out there. Right, yeah. Another fascination I had with the ketogenic diet was some of the results they've had on cancer patients where they have a tumor that's growing and they take sugar out of their diet and put them on a, a ketogenic diet. And really? The tumor growth slows down and eventually stops. Hmm. Because it it's been seen or, or uh, it's been theorized that sugar can feed the feed, uh, feed. feed the tumor. Right. Wow. So, with all that being said, how do you with everything else that you how do you mentally stay engaged and focused on doing a carnivore diet? Just being consistent with that. I think how do with, you keep that edge. Yeah, with, with fitness, you have to make it an appointment. You know, you have ah, to say good if, point. If I'm, if for me, uh, some people like late at night. Some I'm more of early morning mm-hmm. because nobody else is awake. You know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, the kids are asleep. Uh, your, your boss is asleep everywhere. Every, everybody that needs you is usually not going to be awake at 5 a.m., you know, or maybe even earlier. And so if you have to get it in and you know you're not going to be able to do it the rest of the day, that would be the time to do it. OK. Sometimes I can squeeze it in on my lunch break because after work is tough. I'm going to some after hour networking events yeah. or uh, business meetings. So I definitely try to get it in early and staying motivated would be more for positive energy. Mm-hmm. And, and all that's where the mental toughness comes in too, because there's a lot of people that are motivational speakers. And, and, you know, we, we mentioned on the show, David Goggins a lot. Yes. He had a, a, a terrible childhood, horrible and, childhood and so many adversities that he came over that, made him the person he is today. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't have that. I, I I got a pretty good life. I had a good childhood, great parents. And that's the thing. And I remember he talked about that, too. It was like, what if you have, like, a lot of people don't have those same experiences to right. draw off of those scars within their heart or soul or whatever to be like, how is it going to drive me forward? Yeah. So for me, it all boils down to positive energy and wanting to be the best version of myself. There you go. And try to put that off on other people and make it contagious. Okay. Because I don't have bad experiences to overcome. I'm I'm trying to you know be optimized as a human. That's a good one. He's trying to optimize himself as a human. Mm-hmm. That's a good that's a that's a good way to put it. Yeah. So I'm a firm believer in like, you know, I always said motivation is a flighting feeling. Like if I'm motivated to do something, then it's raining outside, guess what? I'm gonna go back inside because now I'm not motivated. Mm-hmm. Kind of like what David Grogan said, an obsessed person is gonna go put on a raincoat and right. run outside and get it yeah. done no matter what. And like you said, kind of like you, you obsessed with it. So, you know, you got a bunch of events you got to do in the evening time. So you're going to wake up early and or make sure, yeah. or make uh, sure that you're going to get it done. Yeah. Otherwise it's not going to happen. No, no. Yeah. It's the best time to get it, knock it out. So tell us a little bit more about your, uh, so moving on. So let's talk about this, uh, this push up, this pull up challenge, pull yeah. up challenge, pull up challenge. What did, what did this come from? I, I think. We all have something that we're good at, you know, maybe it's squats or bench press mm-hmm. and, and mine just happens to be pull-ups. You know, I wish it were squats. I mean, that made cross <laughs> so, a lot easier. So backtracking a little bit, what gives you that, uh, that good foundation in regards to doing the, uh, pull-ups, I think good it was pull-up an, foundation? I, I think it was an accident. When I was in middle school, I, for Christmas, I got a weeder weight bench, you know, the little bitty one that you see at Academy that's like a yeah. hundred bucks and it had a lap pull-down tower. And so I'm you know, 12 years old, 13. And I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have any guidance. It's just, it's in, it's in our den and it was my Christmas present. So, uh, I just made up some workouts and I was, I would, it it didn't come with much weight out. So I put every, every plate it had and I would do about 30 pull downs in the front, about 30 pull downs in the back and then like 30 reverse grip. It was just, it was just pull, lap pull Just all back, just lap. Yeah. And I probably did it every day. I probably didn't take a day off. So that, that set a pretty good foundation. And then after I got to you know, later in high school and college, I knew what I was doing and I had more of a structured workout. And then I got into weighted pull-ups where I put the, the chain belt on Okay. and I would do three sets of 10 with a 45 pound plate. And then when I discovered CrossFit, you know, in the early two well, or late two thousands, you know, around 2012, probably. Okay. Uh, there's a video on my Instagram. It's real far back, but 
I got up to a hundred pounds with some kettlebells. It, it took two kettlebells and I did two reps with a hundred pounds hanging down of, of a strict pull up. So once I got into the weighted pull ups, other things like body weight pull ups were pretty easy. Okay. You know, butterfly pull ups were pretty easy. And then there, there was never anything that I could really stand out at. Like I'm not going to set a, uh, you know, a PR for squats. It's impressive. Or, or clean and jerk, but I can do a lot of pull ups. Pull ups, yeah. So when I I heard about David Goggins doing four thousand and thirty in a twenty four hour period, I said, you know, I think I can come close. And for I, any <laughs> for anybody who doesn't know who David Goggins is, go YouTube David Goggins and listen to him talk to Joe Rogan about doing all those pull ups. Yeah, <clears throat> and the amount of damage that he said. He said literally when he took his gloves off, his first layer of skin, yeah, came off with it. Was it that bad and, for and, you? And, you know, he failed. Uh, once and that was then, and then that's twice. what I was fixing to say. He's, yeah. he, he did. Failed. He failed twice. He, he did three twice. times, right? And on the third time, he got it. Yeah, and man. now since then, that record's been broken. And I think the new guy's like what fifty eight hundred or something like that. Yeah, there there was Mark Jordan that did fifty eight hundred, and it's it's gotten so competitive since David Goggins yeah. did it that uh, it's hard to keep up with who's who has it now. Yeah, okay, it, it's always changing. Uh, there was there's a young guy that uh, apparently did over seven thousand. So, really? Uh, yeah. And is this fully just strict pull-ups, no kipping or butterfly yeah, start, movements? Yeah, starting from a dead hang every Ooh, time. Yeah, yeah. that's tough. So what I did was uh, I, I was like, I think I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it smart. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go in and do thousands right away. I did one hour, and I did three reps a minute for my f on a Saturday. and did That was 180 reps. Uh, so then I gave myself a week off and did two hours. So that's 360 pull-ups. Yeah. And then the next week. Three hours, and that was 540 pull-ups. And then four hours, that was 720 pull-ups. Well, then I told all my friends, hey, I'm doing 1,000 next weekend. <laughs> and when I started 1,000, I did not want to continue doing 1,000. <laughs> and the accountability was I, I, I think I knew ahead of time it was going to be tough, so I told all those people. So they're expecting it. You know, they're yeah. going to say, well, hey, how did it go? Did you yeah, make it? you should have kept it secret. <laughs> I, and I don't want to tell those people that I failed. <laughs> that you failed. So that, so that kept me motivated during that time. And I didn't want to increase the time. I wanted to shrink it within four hours. Okay. Because I, I didn't want to spend five hours. You, you get bored. So I increased the reps to five reps for the first 20 minutes and then four reps for the remaining 40 minutes and the remaining – Hour two, hour three, hour four. And it's every minute on a minute, correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, those for those of you who don't know, every minute on a minute means every minute mm -hmm. he did five pull ups. Right. Minute two, five pull ups. Mm -hmm. It's pretty tough. And about every hour, uh, I would try to drink about two at least two bottles of water. Okay. Because there's tons of lactic acid for building up. And then every hour I would I would, you know, take a short I would pause the timer, take a bathroom break, come right come right back. <laughs> and I would, and it's just an experiment to see how much what, well, what, you can push your body. Yeah, push your body what is go it going to take to, you know, where is it going to go from here? How, what, how am I going to be able to do 2,000? Because my arms were pretty wrecked. You know, it was, yeah. hard, it was hard to drive home. Uh, I, I kept cramping, in, Ooh. you know, in the shower once yeah. I got after 1,000. And, and, it, and it's mainly the arms. Like, the, okay. the, the back feels like it could go all day. Hmm. But the biceps, they're just too small of a muscle. To so handle that like, much repetition and over right. and over. Yeah. And, and the, my hands did fine. Maybe it's Absolutely. that was my next question. How were your hands? Yeah, uh, I mean, most of these I did barehanded, just with chalk. Really? Uh, there's a few uh, where I would I would have a yoga mat that's cut into a square, mm -hmm. and I would hold the yoga mat. But as far as like gloves or grips, to I, me, I, that, I think that would make it harder because yeah. it makes your hands your it expands your grip. Right. I don't like that. I like to, you know, hook grip the bar. Yeah. Right? And so I, ju I would just chalk my hands really good. Did you already have the uh, nice CrossFit calluses built up already on yeah, your hands? Yeah, I think so. I mean, they're, they're, they're already there, and they've been there for decades because I've been doing pull-ups so long. And it was funny because, uh, you know, you were working the fair with the, with YB, the YBL, yeah. and they had that chal that hang challenge. Did you try that challenge so, out? So I, I, on a fixed bar, I, I think every person in Southeast Texas that works out could have won 100 bucks, but they had a little twist on it. And the, the bar was on a ball, bar, ball bearing. On a bearing, yeah, so, yes. Uh, so I, I tried it, and, uh, you know, when I re-gripped, you just slide and slide and slide until your, the, your fingertips are vertical. And so mm -hmm. you're, holding, you're holding on like, like that. And, and so I, I tried to, uh, you know, grip, grip on top of it again, and that didn't work. It didn't work, so, okay. So I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Oh, and, man, you didn't get it. But my friends, they were like, you did a 1,000 pull-ups, you can't do this. And I was like, <laughs> I think that the ideal person that could do that, because some people did it. Yeah, it was a couple and, of guys. Yeah. I think maybe like 
I personally saw two guys accomplish yeah, it. Yeah. So and one of my friends that did it is a a pretty skinny rock climber, mm-hmm. and that's probably the ideal candidate because they do a lot of grip strength on fingertips. So that's what it and is. It, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was so it was totally different than what we normally work out, and so it didn't go very. I saw well. one. I saw one kid do it. He got down to thirteen seconds, and oh, he got okay. cocky, and he started. And he did exactly what you said. He tried to adjust his grip. Uh-huh. As soon as he adjusted his grip, it went straight to fingertips, and he fell off with yeah, 10 seconds yeah. left. I, I re-gripped one time, and I was like, oh, that was a That's kind of disheartening. Yeah. It, it was. It crushed my soul. <clears throat> so um, the 1,000, the 1,000, mm-hmm. that hard, that had to get kind of mentally straining. Because, like, when I talked to you about the, uh, I think it was the the 360 or whatever it was, or maybe the 540, yeah. mm-hmm. you said that you were doing it in the CrossFit gym. And you literally watched three, three classes. Cro- CrossFit classes come yeah. in and out of there. So I saw the same wad three times in a row. Yeah. Uh, the cool part is it, you have friends come over and say, hey, what are you doing? And I'll chat with them for a little bit. <laughs> and they can t- kind of take my mind off of it. And then when I did the 1,000 or in, in the 720, I had a couple friends that would, would stay after class and do a few sets with me. Really? So, okay. So side by side, I do a set. They do a set. And this was in consecutive weeks, right? Yeah, I t- uh, between the 720 and 1,000, I took two weeks. Two weeks, took, okay. Because it took every bit of a week to recover. and so. Uh, but I would have a friend stay for maybe 30 minutes, you know, okay. and do some. And Just they, hang out with you. They may only do two. They, they, they would tire out, like, <laughs> which, which is funny. I'm, I'm like, bro, I just did 500. And you're, you're, <laughs> yeah, you, and you're tiring out after 20. Come yeah, on, man, yeah. help me out here. Uh, but that, that helps keep your mind off of it. and. I almost wanted to watch a movie, but I'm usually doing during doing it during class time, so that way there's people there distracting me, and so you get a new feel coming. That kind of like we talk a new taste almost every time you do it, a new right. a new stimulus for your mind. But definitely doing a thousand, I was I was the first one there, and the classes everybody left, and then I was the last one to leave. <laughs> so was there ever a point where you wanted to just be like, you know what? Uh, I think a thousand push ups not that important. I'll be done with it. I'm good. I'm good with eight hundred. You know the. Doing the five reps and the four reps really was a game changer because three you can do any you can you can do anything three times. Yeah, if, true. If if you did the same thing with squats or push ups, you could do three and and you're done. But when you're doing five, it was getting close to failure uh, sometimes. But you know I, I would push through, and once I got to five hundred, I was like, well, I'm halfway there. All I got to do is what I just did one more time, and then I would get to six hundred and then seven hundred. And when I got to seven twenty. I said, you know, that's what I did two weeks ago. So all I got to do is finish up, and then, then I'm good. There's no point in quitting now. Cool, cool. Yeah, cause that's and that's kind of the I did one challenge. It was this workout where we did like a thousand box step ups with a forty pound pound vest, and I was like, I got that, to that seven. Awful. I got to seven hundred, and I was like, man, you know what? I don't feel like doing this anymore. Uh, but then I don't want to go through the pain it felt to get to the seven hundred. Mm. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to finish this because I'm not ever doing this again. Right. So, yeah. And then as soon as I finish, I can tell those friends, hey, I did it. I did it. Yeah. And that's the- uh, but, but again, you know, in, in today's standard, you know, it, it sounds impressive among our, our friends, but a thousand is not impressive under what, what everybody's been doing. Yeah, so, but we, but, I, so I've still got a long ways to go. Yeah, we're talking about superhuman guys, though. I mean, yeah, come on. Yeah. A thousand is good. That's right. what yeah. That's what we always a guy always tells me. He's like, man, you real fit. I say, no, I got I got a long way to go. He said, okay, and amongst us average people, you're a pretty fit guy. But that goes with constantly wanting to put yourself with that uncommon group of individuals and wanting to succeed more yeah. and more. Yeah, I think any, anybody that's working out five days a week or anybody that's in CrossFit, they're already uncommon. And exactly. so you're, you're trying to be uncommon amongst those un- un- uncommon people. And I think Mark Jordan, you know, he, he's 54. He's the guy that did about 5,800 <sighs> or so. And he actually trained the guy that walked across Antarctica from one side to the other. Really? It was a guy that, that pulled a sled across Antarctica from one side to the other. And he needed a trainer in order to get ready for that. And Mark Jordan was one of his trainers. And he did stuff like, you know, putting his hands in ice buckets and then yeah. pull, pulling sleds. And and he was um, tying pieces of string and yeah, stuff like that after it, with yeah, his hands. Make make a knot out of this rope and mm-hmm. uh, untie this knot with when your hands are frozen. You mean to tell me somebody walked across Antarctica? Yeah, yeah. It was it was really crazy. I can't because, remember that guy's name. Yeah, and uh, he had to pull everything that he needed, and the majority of it was fuel because he yeah. had to melt water or melt the ice to get water. Three hundred and fifty pounds is what sled on, on a sled. Yeah. So just walking across would be hard enough. Yeah. But he had to pull a 300-pound sled through the snow. Man, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. What, what was that with, somebody with wanted no to do that? With no assistance, none. He, he, it was 
by himself. I'm gonna have right. to go. I'm gonna have to go Google this, man. Maybe give me a little bit of motivation to yeah, do something. Even in the city, when you know, when you run a half marathon or you run a marathon, uh, it, think of all the support you have, where you've got ambulances and people following you uh, on yeah, bikes. So this is literally no joke society. It's a life or death. Oh yeah, yeah. Because you could freeze if you just like. Uh, he had, you know, if what if his tent blew away? Yeah, his tent blew away. I like just the fear of like frostbite on your on your like fingertips, your face, your nose. Anything can yeah, happen yeah. to you. He had tape tape okay. all on his nose, and he did all kinds of things, Vaseline all over the place to to keep to keep from getting frostbite. Yeah, and I think he climbed, he summited every mountain. Yeah, every at the high, every highest peak yeah. there is, he's Everest, been up there. K two, every <laughs> and some of them were like a week apart. Where he set a record for that. And just and just thinking about that, like you kind of like what you was talking about, how you started off doing all these pull-ups and lat pull-downs as a kid. Mm-hmm. I don't want people to get it missing. You, there's nothing that happens overnight. Like for this sure. guy didn't wake up and say, you know what, tomorrow I'm going to walk across Antarctica. That's he right, had yeah. to mentally prepare himself, kind of like you did. You said you mentally prepared yourself because you knew that was your strength. You wanted to challenge your strength right. and just maintain that mental edge. It kind of goes along with what, like what the thought process is, is that we only use 40% of our true capabilities. Mm-hmm. And then our mind goes into the state of wanting to, not, I wouldn't say shut off, shut off, but once you get to the point where, hey, we're getting uncomfortable now, and the human body doesn't like to be uncomfortable. We like right. to be safe in a homostasis, you know, a homostatic uh, state, just not unbalanced. But when you get beyond that, that next 60%, that's really when you get to that doing a thousand pull ups, doing fifty eight hundred pull ups, walking across Antarctica. That's yeah. and not only want to say anybody could do it, but if you prepare your body and prepare your mind, anybody could do it. Yeah, it's definitely in the mind because the the guy that walked across Antarctica doesn't uh, look like a superhero. No, uh, his name's Colin O'Brady. Yeah, and just looks like an average guy. Go check out his Instagram page. Colin O'Brady. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna go check him out. So, it makes me feel bad about taking an Joe, elevator every morning. Now. He was on a Joe Rogan podcast. Mm-hmm. That's where I found out about it. Uh, yeah. one, one of my hey. buddies at, at uh, CrossFit, Clint Martin, was there on one of the days I was doing the pull-ups, and, and he was like, hey, if you need something to listen to, it, you know, you should listen to this podcast. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that it was, was a good one. Yeah, and and said, Joe know, Rogan gets all the good people on his show. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he, he's, a, he's a big name. And that, that's, uh, you know, he, he's drawing interesting people from – all walks of life. Yeah. And, and that's what's interesting about his show. It's nice it's everything. Mm-hmm. So it's enough about Joe Rogan. He don't need no pub from us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh-uh. We need the pub. Uh-uh. Right. So Tyler, what else you got going on in the community, man? Want to talk about some of your, you said you was speaking early. You want to tell people about your uh, podcast you got coming up or. Yeah, we're uh, recording some episodes right now and I'm going to release in June. It's called the Tyler knows everything podcast. And it's a little bit of a play on words because if you look at the logo, <laughs> the word knows is crossed out. Yeah. I like it very, I like your logo, man. It's yeah, a cool logo. Because so. I, I always want to learn more. Uh, yeah, the logo is the the Leonardo da Vinci painting of, of the man in the circle. I wanted to say that, but I didn't want to screw up the artist of who it was. Right. So I'll let you do yeah. that part. So and, and and if you look at you know every arm, every leg, and half my body is all different things that I do. Mm-hmm. So like half my body is in a, a business suit, the other, <laughs> the other half is a tank top. There's uh, camo pants because I like to be outdoors and camping and yeah. like, kayaking. There's uh, running shoes. There's some American flag shorts because I'm involved in local politics. <laughs> uh, there's me holding a, a scientific beaker and then a Thor hammer just from all kinds. Man, of you're just that. doing everything, man. That's yeah. that's cool, man. But and it's good to see the podcasting community grow here in uh, here in Southeast Texas, man. Like people say, it's we're not a small town. People like to think Beaumont is a small town, but with the population about 200,000 plus, and you got Nederland, Port Arthur, Port Natchez, Lumberton, mm-hmm. we have a good community and a lot of room to start, you know, taking a deep dive into a lot of these different things and exploring interesting people in a community. So Yeah, there's a lot of interesting people that, that I think would enjoy to be heard, and people can learn something from their story. You know, we're in this room motivated by people's story that we hear on other people's podcasts. Yes. And yeah. I think we can do the same right here and showcase it that they're doing this on a local level and it, it makes it even feel more important. That may be somebody that you saw at H E B uh this morning getting Exactly. Groceries. Yep. Yeah. And we have the advantages now of modern technology to be able to put ourselves out there in a better sense than what you had 15 years ago, maybe even five years ago. Oh, yeah. There, so, there could be somebody listening to this in a different country. Exactly. Right now at this very moment. So if there's someone you listen out there in a different country, please share, like, and comment on this post. Yeah. It's, so. I mean, it's, it's a, a great time to be alive as far as information. You know, I think I've learned more on YouTube and podcasts than I probably did in school at, at some or as far as life advice. Yeah. When it comes to that, you know, nobody really 
you know, back in the nineties, we weren't learning how to, uh, balance a checkbook or do your taxes in school. You know, it was just basic math and science and, and everything that you needed for real life or, you know, how, how to do things around the house without having to call somebody to mm-hmm. do it. Uh, you can, you can learn everything on YouTube. It's kind of like, remember the matrix where he said, I need to learn how to pilot a helicopter. Yes. And they download it into his brain. Straight into the brain. Well, you're kind of doing that now with YouTube. You're like, I need to learn this. And you type it in, except you have to watch it. You know, maybe in the future, it'll be more of a, a link in your brain. And so that's, and that's kind of what me and my wife had a big discussion about is the ability to learn where you could, you have access to a wealth of information through podcasts, through books. You don't even have to read books now. You can just do a, a audio book and learn so many things. Just go to YouTube and kind of get all the information you need and whatever you want. So it's not, it's not hard to pick up these things and learn a lot more now as compared to back in the day. So Yeah, those platforms help me out because I'm not a good reader. I don't like to sit and read. I'll fall asleep. But if I can, I'm very visual. So if I can watch a YouTube clip or listen to an audio book while I'm driving, I retain almost all that information. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> David Goggins' book, listening to that, to that book was probably the most entertaining thing. Mm-hmm. That's probably more entertaining than any podcast I've listened to in a while. Yeah, between every chapter, they did challenges and they did side yeah. commentary mm-hmm. and went in a little bit more in depth. And so if anybody hasn't read it yet, I would encourage you to do the audio version. Exactly. Cool, cool. Yeah, it's a great book. So so tell us about some, uh, what are some challenges that you, uh, what are some things you got coming up in the future? Any more challenges you want to you want to try out or get yourself into? Yeah, you know, time management's always interesting because I'm, I'm trying to narrow down what organizations I should be involved in that are going to add the most value to my life mm-hmm. and not take away from other relationships, you know, friends or family. And so I think I've narrowed it down to, you know, kind of the, you know, the top five that I'm, you know, pretty much involved in on a regular basis. Some of the board of directors and the some of the local chamber of commerce is the Southeast Texas Young Professionals is great. And okay. And then I'm involved in local politics, but I I get along with everybody. And I think that's what I'm trying to do with the younger generation is, is be more, be more moderate and be in the middle because it, if you're, if you're so polarized on one end of the spectrum or the other, you're just never going to get anything done. Yeah. Not to take too, not to take too much of a deep dive into politics, but I agree with you 100%. It's like we almost forced to label ourselves one way or the other. And then once you label yourself, it almost like you have to cut your mindset off from views of the other side that you may agree with yeah and i'm a firm believer is nobody's all one way and nobody's all the other way right i I try to have a a good combination of common sense you know there you go that's a good way to put it if something makes sense i don't care whose idea it was i would agree with that okay versus well that wasn't my party's idea so i'm supposed to go against it you know it may be a good idea uh you know i made a post the other day i had uh i recently got solar panels put on my house Solar panels, yeah. wow! And then I had, and I, I bought a Prius several years ago, and I also have a truck. But day to day, I drive. <laughs> you just tried everything. So, out. Uh, yeah, you're trying to better the community, better yourself. Yeah. So I took a picture and I, I said, "Hey, am I the coolest Republican or what?" <laughs> <laughs> with, the, 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 with the panels and the hybrid car. Okay, that's cool, cool, man. Well, I think we have a, uh, yeah, one absolute, a couple of questions we have from the live feed. Let's see if you can take a stab at these. Some okay. people have some good stuff, so. Uh, somebody asked, can you have it all career, family, personal business, and fitness? He said, uh, she said it always seems like one gets sacrificed. Yeah. I want to be good at, at all those things. Yeah. And you're never going to be perfect at one or the other. But once I start noticing that I'm not giving a hundred percent to one of those areas, then I'll try to scale back something else. And then kind of, it's like a constant balance. It is. Okay. Yeah, it, it's kind of like with when, you know, if you're newly married and you wait, until you're ready to have kids, you'll never have kids. You kind of just have to do it and then figure it out along the way. And so there, there has been mistakes I've made where I, I overcommit myself and then I'll scale it back. Okay. But uh, when it all, all boils down, you know, I do a lot of things in my career uh, with technology, but for, to really make it as simple terms as possible, you know, I sell a lot of copy machines every day. Yeah. And nobody when they were a kid said, well, what do you want to be when you grew up? And they said, I want to sell, sell copy machines. Yeah, nobody said that. <laughs> yeah. But I make a lucrative living, and I found out, I figured out a way to make it fun. And there that's, you go. that's what I would tell people. You may be in a job that's not what you thought you wanted to do. When you were in kindergarten and you drew a picture of what you want to be, that may not be where you're at right now. But I guarantee you, you can find some way to make it fun. And what I did in, in my career is 
I, I got over involved in a lot of the the marketing for my company and and the networking events and started doing some interesting things with video for customers and clients. Yeah, and, uh, I, I sold a copier to uh, somebody in another state from a YouTube video that I made. Okay, you know, cool, he, he cool. Call, he called me after hours and said, "Hey, I just saw your video. You know, I want to buy that." And it was, it was a big one. It was a pretty big sale. And so that that's just things that you have to tailor it to what you like to do. I like you know I like the internet. I like. Uh, making, you know, creating content and doing videos. So I do the social media for my company and, cool, and my cool. professional page. So I, I figured out a way to make something that you may not perceive as fun, fun for me. Fun for you. And, I it. and that's what you have to love Monday. If, if you don't wake up every Monday oh. and you're excited. So to, many people hate Monday though. Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so I, I love Monday because it, it's everything that I'm, I, I created to have fun in, in my little world. All right. Next question. Ways to stay motivated as a busy adult with a child and a full time job. I think uh, to to stay motivated is I uh, again I draw for of that positive energy and choose the mood you want to be in. You know, there's things that that are going to happen in your life that are going to put you in a bad mood, but you have to realize that you have the power to control yourself of what mood you're going to be in. There you go. You know, uh, I woke up yesterday and and uh, my grandmother died. I got a text from my dad. So what would most people do? They're going to cancel everything. They would, yes. they would cancel this podcast. They would, they would shut their whole life down. And I said, you know what? She, she was almost a hundred. She was 94. Like I knew, I knew this was coming Yeah. and, and I'm going to sell it. I'm going to go Tuesday and celebrate her life. There you go. The, that's the way to, that's a good way to put it. She, uh, my grandmother who, who passed away is not going to know that I'm sad for a whole week. Exactly. She, she would want me to be, be happy for to continue life. living your life and yes, doing what you do. Yes. Be, be, be happy for, uh, you know, my kids and be happy for my surround. What, what good is going to come from me feeling sorry for myself for the next three days? You know, right. no, nothing, mm -hmm. nothing. So you have to choose your mood. And I gave a speech about this or, um, at a, another event where, you know, people say that, you, you know, you get crazy. People get crazy on a full moon you know? <laughs> and you, you, you can't blame bad behavior on something that you can control. You're, exactly. you're in control of your behavior. Exactly. You're in control of your destiny and, and you got to wake up every day and pick a good one. It's all about mindset. You could let, you could let your outside environment dictate you or like you say, you could control it and you could own it and just make the best out of every situation that you put yourself into. Yeah, that's right. And, and you know, money causes a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. So I, I I choose to have multiple streams of income because I don't want to be go. stressed. Be stressed money. out about yeah. one line of income coming in. That's right. Cool, cool. All right. So with another question, Jackie asked us, "How did you master all those pull ups?" I guess you missed that first part. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. If if you weren't listening to the first part, uh, you know, it it, it kind of started with a journey that was in middle school. You can rewind and hear that story. But again, I've got you know, I got I drew out a very strategic rep scheme of where I started from one hour you to, go. to two hour, three hours, four hours. So it was very planned. I didn't just wing it. And because David Goggins even even says at the end of his book, he's like, I don't recommend anyone trying what I did. <laughs> don't go out there and run 100 miles before you run a marathon. A marathon. Like he did. Yes. Uh, he said there's smarter ways to do it. And he's become smarter. You know, uh, you may remember how he used to not stretch. And now he does a lot more. Stretching. A lot more stretches, he mobility stuff. It almost killed him. It, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So that's very important to plan everything. You know, nobody should wake up tomorrow and be motivated by me and do a thousand pull-ups. They should plan it carefully. And that's kind of the and that's kind of thing where I like to tell people about is the fact that you have to plan. You have to have goals and you have to have things you have to say because if not, you're just shooting in the wind. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're spitting in the wind. You're spitting back at yourself. You tend to forget what you're supposed to achieve and biting off those little chunks at a time. Yeah, writing everything down. Uh, being early. I, I'm early everywhere I go. Uh, there you go. You know, 15 minutes, 30 hold minutes on, early. Hold on, hold on, Naomi Doyle, did you hear what this man just said? <laughs> yeah, uh, just being early and prepared. Prepared. You know, but before I came here, I made notes about what I want to talk yeah. about. You know, some, you'd, you'd be surprised how many people just show up to a job interview and they haven't even put any thought into it. And, you know, you, you've got, there's there's no substitute for, for planning and getting somewhere early and that you're, you're putting your full commitment in. And just being ready. Just mm -hmm. being ready it's to It's a lot go. less stressful. It is. Yeah. And trust me, when you prepare, it is a lot less stress. You have that air of confidence about yourself. And people always say, I give people to say, Ernest, you always, you seem like to always know you're talking about. No, I just know when to talk and when to shut up. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> have you ever, you know, at your job, have you ever been on a conference call and the person, the person leading the conference call is not ready at all? And yes. They're, they're like, I scrambled. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me put you on mute. Or you go to a presentation and someone 
is uploading their PowerPoint presentation for the first time. I, I, I just it, the, it's the, mind boggling. Right. I, I get there before anybody does. You know, when I when I gave a speech at Rotary, I got there an hour early and set up my PowerPoint and made sure it worked. Yes. And ran through it before yeah. anybody came in the door because I don't want to be the guy standing up there saying, Oh, uh, fumbling around, can't hold get on, it hold working. on. This is not working. Well, let me get this going again. Let me just wing the speech without the PowerPoint because that's not working. No, I'm gonna get there in plenty of time. And and I end up waiting. You know, I'm I'm sitting there twiddling my thumbs for thirty minutes, but I know that everything's going to go 100% smooth. There you go. Cool, cool. So one last question for the day. This one is off topic. Once someone wants to know who is going to die first on Game of Thrones tonight, uh, your prediction. Oh, man. Uh, I, I'm, you know, it's, it's going to be a long episode, long season, mm-hmm. and they're going to leave us with something hanging. You, know, to, you think, you think they're yeah. going to leave us hanging? Yeah, it's going to be late at night. Everybody's going to be tired at work tomorrow because you, when you're going to be amped up, because somebody's gonna, I, I, here's what I'll, I'll I'll throw out this predi- prediction. I think somebody will get killed and we won't see their face. You know, like a sword goes through somebody. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, that's so a good. Ah, oh, that's a good one. That's, so, I didn't think about that. So yeah. that's a good way to put it. So I'll say that. Yeah, that'll be my prediction for okay, today. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you, thank you for your time today, Tyler. Tell the people where they can find you at your uh, social media, ha- your handles, and everything like that. Let them know. Yeah, check me out on social media. There's uh, there's my personal page. There's there's a, a career business page. Uh, pretty soon there'll be the podcast page. I'm waiting until June. You know, a little closer to that to to launch that. Uh, Instagram and uh, LinkedIn. A lot of people sleep on LinkedIn. I need, I think you need to get on. I need to yeah. update my LinkedIn. I, I get emails from LinkedIn every day, and yeah, I need yeah, to update it. And and just be consistent about it. Uh, push content. You know, a lot a lot of people that have a have a side hustle or a business, they, they say, "Well, I just don't feel like I'm interesting enough to to post once a week or to post post push all the content." Time. There, yes. there there are reality shows out there that are far less interesting about. And then, then what compared to what, what you guys are up to, right. put, put it out there and push that content and keep it consistent. I remember there's one guy I follow. His name is, uh, Kev on stage and he does his good, you know, clean comedy. He does, does YouTube videos all the time. And I think he ended up doing like, uh, him and his buddies did a video between like the top four potato chips that come into like that big sack where you get like 200 chips. Yeah. And it went viral. Then all of a sudden he got endorsements from Lay's potato chips and everything else. And he said, it's crazy because I've been putting all this content out. For five years, and this is the one video that take off because you never yeah. know. Yeah, what a you time never know what's going to take off. There, what there, a time! There's people famous for uh, making slime and kids yeah. watching their videos. That's exactly. crazy. We have some of that uh, YouTube. Use some YouTuber slime at the house. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> See, Thad even brought it. So, all right. So I didn't buy it. you didn't buy it. No. So Thad, you want to leave the people with anything? Got anything to say? Close it out. Check out your class Saturdays yeah, nine o'clock. Go to Triangle CrossFit. If you, uh, anybody interested in it, uh, you can hit me up on Facebook. Uh, send me a message, and uh, come on out and give it a shot. Here you go, and Tyler. What gym could the people find you at working out? Yeah, I'm usually at uh, CrossFit Lumberton if it's early morning. Okay. Cro- CrossFit Beaumont if it's uh, later in the evening. Okay. You know, we cool, got a really cool. cool thing going on for members at CrossFit Beaumont where it's 24 hour access. Okay. Cool. So nice. That's, cool. that's pretty cool. Questions about how to deal with a busy schedule? You know, I can't make it at. 6 a.m. Availability to, to the hey, gym. 24-hour access for members. And, of course, you can find me at Golden Triangle CrossFit or in my garage. I built a full CrossFit gym. Talking about availability, That's I, was going to, I was going to work a turnaround. My biggest fear was not being able to work out. Then my wife said, you know, why don't you put a, uh, a gym in a garage? I say, say no more. That's genius. Yeah. I really want to get a, uh, a bar and some bumper plates for the garage because there's so much you can do with just a bar Man. and bumper plates. And that would help me get my squat better i always tell people uh a shameless plug boat fitness supply in houston yeah <laughs> that place is that place is heaven for anybody who wants to build a gym and heaven. so w- when i get some gym equipment at home i'm only going to get equipment for m- movements that i'm bad at ah there you go because work on I, what you're bad at i don't want to do pull-ups at, at home yes I, I'm, I'm already you know proficient at that i want to be doing thrusters at home and squats box, box jumps and squats, squats. Exactly. there you go there you go. Well, thank you for your time, Tyler. Uh, appreciate you being here with us today. Yeah, thanks, Tyler. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. Good episode, guys. And once again, you can find us on Facebook Live. Hopefully, we'll have this up posted on Podbean, and you can find us on iTunes later this week. And uh, signing out, and I got to leave you guys with a little special uh, special closeout video song today for us. So thank you.